just said a lot of echo in there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries at all. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call to order the April 25th CPPC meeting. It is 2.08 p.m. This meeting is being conducted with a virtual component. Anyone wishing to address the committee virtually may join the meeting online at https colon slash slash mountainview.zoom.us slash j slash 84754933805 or by dialing 669-900-9128 and entering webinar ID 847-5493-3805. When the chair announces the item on which on which you wish to speak, click the raise hand feature in Zoom or dial star nine on your phone. When the chair calls your name to provide public comment, if you are participating via, via phone, please press star six to unmute yourself. Any emails received by 12 p.m. today were forwarded to the CPPC. Emails received after 12 p.m. will not be read during the meeting, but will be entered into the record for the meeting. Regionally, recently, regional and local elected and appointed bodies have been subject, subjected to disruptive, racist, verbal attacks by anonymous callers during virtual public comments. The city of Mountain View is fully committed to racial, religious, and cultural equity and justice as we strive to create a welcoming, safe, and inclusive community for all. This advisory body, uh, this, sorry, this uh, council subcommittee welcomes respectful and non-threatening public comments regarding matters over which the subcommittee has jurisdiction. Comments deemed otherwise, pursuant to the Council Code of Conduct and the Government Code, may be grounds for immediately terminating a speaker's comment period. And now I will ask uh, Ms. Deputy City Manager, Ms. Thomas, to take the roll call, please. Uh, Mayor Showalter. Here. Councilmember Hicks. Here. Chair Ramirez. Thank you. Yeah, here. Thank you. <laughs> Item three, minutes approval, CPPC minutes uh, from November 28th, 2023. Does anyone have any comments or questions about the meeting minutes? So you know uh, questions or comments. Uh, would anyone? Well, uh, is there public comment? Do we have anyone on the line? Um, no, we have two people. I don't believe anyone wants to comment. People that are. Thank you very much. Um, a motion is in order to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion. To Thank you. Minutes. Would you like to second the motion? Sure. I second the motion. Thank you very much. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, so let's take a roll call. Uh, Mayor Schilwather? Yes. Councilmember Hicks? Yes. Chair Ramirez? Yes. Then it carries 3 0. Thank you. We'll move up to item four oral communications. Uh, item four is oral communications, communications from the public. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons wishing to address the committee on any matter not on the agenda. Speakers are allowed to speak on any topic for up to three minutes during this section. State law prohibits the CPPC from acting on non-agendized items. Would any member of the public like to provide comment on an item that is not on the agenda? If so, please submit a blue card, or if on Zoom, click the raise hand feature or dial star nine on your phone. No public comments. Thank you. We will now close oral communications and move to uh, discussion and action items, beginning with 5.1, revisions to Council Policy 813, City Council Meeting Section 14, Study Sessions. Assistant City Manager Audrey Seymour, Seymour Ram Ramberg will present this item. Thank you, Chair Ramirez. Um, council um, has held 15 study sessions in this past year. And some interest was expressed to take a look at what the process is for our study sections. Um, it is a section in Council Policy 813. It deals with city council meetings. Uh, section 14 specifically addresses study sessions. And its language is not very um, detailed about what types of items come to study sessions and how they get um, uh, deliberated and then how direction is taken from study sessions into follow up by staff. And so it seemed there was an opportunity to further clarify and inform um, what's in the policy language to the practice set um, the council desires. Um, in terms of how the council has been using uh, study sessions, um, typically they are to um, provide a narrowing down or choice among options as it relates to a scope of service or scope of work um, for some new area of policy 
um, or program or project. Um, there might be um, a completely developed scope that the council, the staff is seeking confirmation of, but it's more informal so that the council really has an opportunity to provide input in a, in a formative way. Um, so things aren't coming to the council kind of fully baked. Um, and um, there are options that council can select from. Um, also, um, kind of in, in a different category, when the full council is interviewing for a board to commissions, those are done under the, uh, the study session. Typically, those study sessions are held earlier than the 6.30 start time of the regular agenda. Um, there are some ways that study sessions are similar to regular agenda items. I mean, staff obviously isn't coming in completely cold. They have done a fair amount of, of analysis and research that might have included public um, outreach that is then um, summarized for the council um, and perhaps even um, formatted into a set of uh, options or alternatives or even a preferred alternative. Um, but still, these are items where generally there hasn't been um, in a prior setting, clear direction from council. Um, and there are um, questions that staff wants to pose to council to make sure that we're on the right track um, so that we're not coming back for final action um, in, uh, with something that's fully baked but doesn't really reflect the intent the council had it. Um, and so that's been helpful to staff to have that early check-in. Um, and what has also seemed helpful for, for the council is the more informal um, setting, or it's not the same setting, but the, the structure is more informal and there's more dialogue, um, more rounds of, of question and comment and input. Um, and then an opportunity at the end for that to all get summarized um, and for there to be an indication of where there is majority support for certain directions. And um, that, that is what staff will then take to further develop the item uh, to bring back to council for action. So that's what we have um, uh, been doing with our count, our study sessions, the 15 that we had last year, for example, and then there have been a few so far this year. Um, and what is proposed in your packet as a change to policy A13, section 14, is to include um, what, what hadn't really been there before, which is statements regarding the purpose and benefits of study sessions and how those are a bit different from regular business items. Um, give a little bit more definition to how staff questions are used to focus the council feedback and direction um, and to clarify how council feedback and direction will be synthesized so that we can hopefully all be on the same page coming out of the study session. That's, I think, one of the, the things that in that more informal, um, open-ended nature that study sessions can have is a bit of the, the challenge is when things are more open-ended, um, does everybody walk out um, having the same recollection of where the, the council um, ended up? Um, and then the last thing that's in the proposed changes is something that um, uh, has come up a couple times in the past few years when um, there's been a change by a council member uh, in terms of the direction provided at a study session and then um, wanting to have clarity of what the process is to, um, in, in case there is a change in the majority support direction that was provided at the study session. So I also want to acknowledge and thank Chair Ramirez for your submitting alternative language. Um, I, I, it's clear that you've thought about this and I'm sure you'll want to speak to that um, when we um, get to um, the deliberation, but that, that includes the comments that I wanted to make, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, would any member of the committee uh, like to ask any questions before I open the item to public comment? I have some questions. 
So my first question is when, maybe I should know this from reading it, but I don't. Um, when you refer to council members making changes, um, does that refer to after the meeting? So if I express myself in the meeting and I walk away and later, I okay, just to be clear on that, maybe it says that, but it's not clear to me. Um, and then the other That's question- the other question I had was, and I imagine you're going to do this anyway, Chair, but just a sort of high level summary of, you know, because I've just read your your proposed changes, like what mode debated it and what are the main differences? I think I see, but, you know, I read it quickly, so maybe you can summarize that. Uh, I, I would be happy to, um, and it feels more like deliberation, so. Okay. We can um, wait for that. I, I, right after public comment. All right. to... And maybe I'll ask you further questions. After sure. This. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Mayor? Yeah, I was wondering if you'd had a chance to do any benchmarking of what um, the practices in neighboring communities. I know in talking to some other council members, I've heard that there are some communities here nearby who have like a special meeting a month that's devoted to study sessions and um, they, you know, they're actually held <laughs> at a different time. And I, I just wondered what are the, what's, what's the range of practices? That's a, a good question. Um, we did seek to do some online research to try to find written policies about study sessions and um, didn't come up with much. Um, I had a conversation with one of my colleagues um, and their practice was similar to ours, but I didn't do um, extensive um, outreach and conversations to, to hear about different um, models. Well, I think it was either Sunnyvale or Palo Alto. I mean, it wasn't very far afield. That um, because of, you know, a standing kind of meeting for these. Anyway, yeah. But I thought that was interesting. Um, yeah. Because as you said at the beginning, you know we have a lot of them, and uh, I mean there were nineteen last year. That's a, that's a that's a big percentage of our meetings that have <laughs> a study sections. So they're they're you know they're really important and they take a lot of time. Um, I guess the other thing I would wonder is the time for study sessions. Typically, um, aren't they? My my memory is that they're you know on the order of an hour to three hours each. Most of them are in the like hour and a half range. Is that right? I'm remembering it. Some of them are more traumatic than others, so they seem more. <laughs> I, I think one to two and a half hours probably is the, the, the most typical range. We do try to estimate the amount of time oh, yeah. that they will take ahead of time. Um, and then um, in terms of a, a set aside of a day, for um, study sessions, um, I've worked for three other cities and haven't ever seen that. I've seen, I've seen them run fairly typical or, or similar to the way we run them and having the same kinds of um, challenges around uh, everyone feeling like they're clear on the same direction um, and that they have the timing wise in terms of how they work in the regular meetings is, is typical working in the regular meetings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have any other questions? Um, seeing no other questions, I do not have any, so I'll turn to uh, the public. Would any member of the public like to provide comment on this item? If so, please submit a blue card or if on Zoom, click the raise hand feature or dial star nine on your phone. No members of the public wishing to speak. Thank you. I will now bring this back for PPC, CPPC discussion. Um, I, I think I'll start uh, in response to your questions, uh, com committee member Hicks. So I think as a, as a preamble, um, I had an opportunity to speak uh, briefly with the city manager uh, about two days ago, I think. And I, I had shared with her at that time, I was landing in a very different place from where I'm landing now. Um, I, I have felt that we've struggled with study, study sessions for quite some time and, and uh, I printed up actually uh, uh, many different examples of the questions that we were asked. <laughs> um, and the conclusion I had come to is I'm not sure that there's a lot of value in the format that we have been using for study sessions. Yes, sir. Um, that most, if not all of the work could be done through 
uh, new business or unfinished business um, in a more conventional setting where there is a clear motion articulated at the end. And not always, but generally, um, I think it, an easier path to a shared understanding of the direction that we're providing. Um, and what I um, have appreciated from the conversation with the city manager is that there are a lot of cases where study sessions have tremendous value for staff. Um, and so I've, I've tried to consolidate some of the that, that feedback and understanding in um, some tactical revisions to uh, the language that we were provided. I think that there was there's a lot of uh, really good material and the, the staff provided language. But what I tried to do is be a little bit more uh, precise in, in establishing some guardrails. Um, and again, an overriding, two overriding considerations um, so that staff shall retain discretion in what questions to ask and when to ask those questions, when to um, recommend a, a study session format. And uh, the other overriding consideration is really at the end of the day, the council needs to exercise um, some discipline, right? We need, if the burden falls on us to be clear in the direction that we provide. And if we can't do that, then the staff are going to struggle, I think, to come back with materials that um, meet the expectations of the council. So I'll just really quickly go through it. Does everyone have a copy? Are there copies available for those? Thank you. Thank you for printing the copies. I appreciate it. Sure. Um, so uh, very similarly, I think just starting off with um, when, uh, how a, a study session may be placed on the agenda. It's essentially pursuant to the, the section of the policy that describes how every other agenda item uh, is placed, right? It's uh, subject, I think section two says uh, at the discretion of the city manager and city clerk, that's how the uh, agenda order would be determined. Um, and it, it's, uh, it would, uh, the same requirements of an ordinary agenda item would apply here as well, that it's properly noticed that there, there's an opportunity for members of the public to participate. And then, um, so where the, the next section deviates is it provides um, some ideas for when uh, a study session would be appropriate. It's not, um, it's not you know, a, a, an exhaustive list, but I think it helps convey um, for future councils and, and, and administrations, here's when we recognize that study sessions have tremendous value. Um, these are pretty rare, but we have had on occasion opportunities for the council to receive information. Um, and the example that came to mind was October 2015. Um, Mayor, you might remember uh, the um, before the council discussed uh, tenant protections, there was a uh, sort of like a round table with representatives from the California Apartment Association, and, and I think Julia Brody was there. It was, it, we don't usually do that, but it was a great opportunity to hear different perspectives from key stakeholders and then for members of the council to ask questions. So that feels like a study session, you know, far more so than a new business item. Uh, there was action taken, you know, but it was, it's the kind of format that might be sensible for when we're soliciting information and we, we need to learn. Um, and that, that it also applies to staff too. There's, information you, you need to let us know where we can have that kind of dialogue. This is an appropriate study session uh, format. And two, we've conducted interviews and study sessions. I think that's self-explanatory. Now, three is, is where I, I got a, a lot of valuable insight from, from the city manager. And that's sometimes we will ask staff to do something and not provide any real parameters or, or guidance. Um, and so staff has very little to work with. And really, they're, they're then coming back to us to say, what is it that you want us to do? Um, and city manager, I don't know if you would like to provide some examples of that, but but even you know we're we're anticipating within the next few months, I think some study sessions where basically we're being asked to provide a scope for a program or a concept that sounded good to us, you know, maybe a year ago, but we didn't really flesh out in a meaningful way. Um, and then uh, for the or that could also be uh, the council goal setting or work plan discussion too, where we're all coming in tabula rasa, right? So how is it um, that we you know, can have, uh, the, the study session provides an opportunity to have a wide ranging and comprehensive discussion um, and in a more informal way as uh, the assistant city manager was describing, you know, it, it, there really isn't previous guidance that staff can take to us for a new business item. And the last one is sort of a catch all 
uh, there may be other occasions where a study session really is the best or only way uh, for staff to solicit input from the council. Um, I, I, I feel like one thing that we, we could explore as, um, as a subcommittee and then with the full council is maybe there are times where it would be more appropriate to uh, provide uh, some uh, a council subcommittee to investigate a matter. Um, so I, for instance, I don't think we need to have multiple study sessions over um, environmental su sustainability matters because we have a council subcommittee that is well equipped to do a lot of that work. Um, you know, there might be a, a reason to come back to the full council to do a check in. But generally speaking, you know, there are things that we could probably empower a subcommittee to do that will, you know, spare staff the burden of going to a council in a study session. But really, it's at the city managers and, the, and staff's discretion about when that would apply. And then <laughs> the next set of changes um, are uh, providing some um, guidance for types of questions to ask. So that would be, um, in this, I, I'm not terribly sophisticated or technologically savvy. So my apologies, I wasn't able to prepare a red, red lined copy, um, but it would be in, in revisions to two. Um, and it, again, it's it's not prescriptive, but it's just, it's intended to help staff prepare questions that we're going to be able to respond to with clarity, right? And I think some of the objectives or, or goals are to provide clarity and direction to have uh, the both the, the questions and the answers be as objective as possible uh, to avoid um, uh, terms that are open to uh, interpretation. Uh, so I, I used an example that came from a, a recent study session where the three of us were the Brown Act group that discussed it, you know, and we never actually talked about what is what is high growth. If we had decided to pursue a high growth scenario, what would that actually mean? We might have different ideas on how to interpret that, even though we all voted for the same term. So it's it's you know, intended to help ensure that at the end of the discussion, um, everyone, the council and the staff are on the same page about what what the direction is. Um, I've made some very minor changes to some other things. So for for two, three, um, the uh, the language that was provided to us, I think, says uh, mayor or staff will um, provide a summary. Um, and I, I I think the different mayors have different levels of comfort <laughs> with. Um, it's a great burden, as staff knows, to try and prepare um, notes for seven monologues, <laughs> right? And then to discern where there's a, a synthesis. Um, so I know we each of us has had the privilege to, to be mayor and I think has struggled with, with that. So I, I left it really up to the discretion of the mayor, whether the mayor would take on that responsibility or invite staff to provide a summary. But so just clarifying the, the, the order of uh, responsibility uh, in, in providing the summary. And then um, there was one other change. Um, let's see if I could, I, oh, uh, so for, for uh, three, one, uh, the city clerk shall include the council direction I included the word majority just to clarify that there's there's a lot of ambiguity in the um, the input that we provide. Sometimes somebody will say something that sounds like a good idea and nobody comments on it, but um, it's it may not it may or may not be the majority will. So I think what what we're asking the city clerk to do specifically is record. Uh, the items where there, there were, there's a clear majority uh, requesting that staff return with a given set of items. Um, and then, so I think the rest of, of the document is the same. Um, I wanted to express my appreciation to staff for providing that last section um, because I, I think we've struggled with what happens when a council member changes their mind after a meeting. Um, there have been different ways that has played out. And so having clarity um, in, in how we treat uh, after the fact, you know, changes of, of uh, position, I think it will, will be very valuable. So that's, um, I was long-winded, my apologies, but I, I hope that uh, helps. Um, I'm not wedded to this language, uh, so I'm open, we can 
were smithed or asked staff to make some tactical changes, but that's the intent, really. Clarity, objectivity, shared understanding. I have some other things that I can reference, but I think I'll stop there and invite questions or comments. Okay, I have some comments and questions. Sure. Just for clarity, for me, it looks like the first page is mostly different, and the things on the second half is all almost all the same, except very you pointed page. out one or two one word where you put in majority. Right. Okay, so I'm trying to wrap my mind around the the changes to the first page, and I'm still I'm still thinking about that. But let me say the things. I guess you know much of this seems fine. I I I do take exception to the the very first three words in special cases because I think we do study sessions quite frequently. They don't seem to be very special cases. They seem to be common and frequent. And that's, I would hate to change to special cases because for me, I um, I think there's tremendous value in the, the study sessions. I think that because of the Brown Act, which I value, um, you know, and keeps everything public, we have no way of having, you know, we can have a small Brown Act group discussion, which can be in depth and which I value, but with the whole council and also including the public. Um, it's our only opportunity to really on the ground floor when we're conceiving of something, get everybody's input. And the other piece that I value about study sessions is even if I, I was in a Brown Act with the two of you, I wouldn't have necessarily, I do talk to members of the public often before a study session or another item on the agenda, but not everyone, I don't know everyone in the public who's, who's interested. So I find it really valuable to, in the beginning of, you know, when we're first considering uh, an agenda item, a project we're taking on to really to, to really have an in-depth discussion. Um, so to me, it's not in special cases. And this is, if we're going with the language in the first one, it says the purpose of study sessions is to provide an opportunity for the council to discuss policy matters. But I really think it's for the council and the public to discuss. I mean, I know we don't have a tremendous chat and talk with the public at that point because there's not time. But I really think for me, that's what it's about. Um, the problem I had, the main thing I thought this was about was to put straw polls in here, because that, I think, I think you started doing them, Chair, when you were mayor, and I found those tremendously helpful for clarifying what we, what the majority opinion was, because we would often go down the line, and if the mayor were to speak first, and we went down the line, she wouldn't have the opportunity necessarily to say whether she agreed with things you said and right. things I said. And we wouldn't even know, we wouldn't even know if there was majority, if there was consensus for certain items. So to me, that's the main thing I want to come out of this. And I know some people when, when they've chaired, when they've been mayor, not the two of you actually, but they're, one of their big concerns is, is timeliness, which I understand people can participate better if there's timeliness, but they would cut off like a second round of review, which was the opportunity a council member would have to say, oh, I also agreed with what Lucas said or whatever. So there was no way of knowing even what majority, what the majority uh, agreement was or consensus was. So to me, that's the main thing that I want to make sure that straw polls are done. Um, other than that, I, I'm i mulling over these changes. So I'm still thinking about them, but those are my comments at this point. Thank you. Well, I have some comments. Um, uh, one of the things I have thought over the years as a problem with study session is that there's often such a long period of time between when we have the study session and when the action item comes to us. Sometimes it's literally years. And so, you know, we've given direction in a study session and the situation has changed really a lot. And yet staff seems to still go with 
the direction that we gave with a outdated set of facts. So that's one of the things I've found over time to be worrisome about the study session is in a sense, I think from time to time, we have to have more check-ins. I would, I would almost think we need a mini study session procedure where we're not gonna do the full you know, two hour thing, but we wanna zero in on things. And there've been a couple of things that we've tried to do that on, but I think for me, for some, I mean, the projects, the things that we work on, housing issues, homeless issues, you know, the uh, sustainability issues, these are not things that are handled in, you know, a four year term. These are things that people work on for, you know, for a long, long time. And so that's one of the things that I've always found to be a problem with the study sessions is, is that gap. Um, but, and then, um, and then another thing I think that was mentioned earlier that isn't in the procedure is the problem of discipline, of discussion. You know, we, we have over time, there are varying members who um, feel the need to, you know, talk a lot. And then there are other people who are very terse. And I'm not sure you can ever really get away from that, but we don't have any procedure for saying, you know, okay, you've talked for 10 minutes, that's enough. Uh, we don't even run a timer. They do in Palo Alto. Well, I don't think it would be a bad idea, but... um. <laughs> You know, I mean, so we're not even aware of how long we talk. I, 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 um, but I, I do think that's also an issue with the timeliness is that, you know, depending on where you come in the conversation, um, uh, there's a feeling that, you know, people are getting, um, uh, we're getting tired and, and a little cranky and they <laughs> they don't really want to hear what you say. They want to they get this over with. So, so I... I think the discipline, how we can bring discipline into the discussion is, is important. And I think that the straw polls helps with that because it's a way of um, getting, you know, everybody's uh, or, or, or the major um, uh, components of people's uh, suggestions down into the record, even if you didn't talk about it for a long, long time, you just stated it. And, you know, and, and especially, I know when you were mayor, you would always query everybody. Did we remember everything to take a straw poll on? So if, if something had been left out, we could, you know, we could, we could ask you to add it to the list. And that, that was, I found that really helpful. I like that a lot. So, so I, I think that, you know, that kind of helps with the discipline for a little bit, although I'm not, anyway, a little bit, I would hope that's, <laughs> um, then uh, the other thing, I they are not a special case. They are a standard operating procedure. So uh, I, I don't think that calling them a special case is right. It is possible that many of these things could be handled in regular or special meeting agendas. Um, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. That is at the um, that is at the uh, discretion of the um, the staff. I would also say that. Um, I don't think that they're that much more, uh, I mean, they are a little more open-ended in discussion, but just a little bit. I mean, when we compare, you know, say the discussion that we had um, last, uh, the last meeting at the, on the economic vitality strategy, that was an action item. That wasn't a study session. It went on for almost three hours and it had many of the characteristics of that and that people went through it multiple times and, you know, and, and that was good. I mean, that was the way we handled that. But if we had labeled that a study session, it, I mean, I guess we wouldn't have approved the document at the end. That, that was what was different. But, but still in all, the discussion was very, to me, was very similar to what we would normally have in a study session. So, um, so I just find this a, a little amorphous. It's not necessarily wrong to be amorphous, but I still, and maybe it should be. Maybe we should just say the staff has discretion to, to do this. But I do, I do think that um, the synthesis of the council direction um, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, there had and and we we've, we've been getting little write-ups recently about that, and I think that they are helpful. So I appreciate that. Um, I don't know. Do we have a process for disagreeing with them at the moment? I mean, if there's a problem, is there? Do you mean with with the uh, summary of? Yeah. Um, 
generally I would talk to council members. Uh, I, I, so far from what I've heard, I think we've been trying to keep it tight. So if you look at, there's actually a list of the items that came to you all last year. And we're really trying to keep it to those items that truly where staff doesn't have direction already, or maybe it's changed so much that we need to come back. And I think this was to a, a earlier point you made, Mayor, where perhaps things were started years ago and it's taken a long time. And so we have had study session check-ins in that manner. And then the direction that, that I have, have received from council is to do more frequent check-ins on some of the items that do have the longer time frame. So whether they're off agenda memos or briefings. So we've been doing things like that. So I, I haven't really had too much of the situation you just asked about where if there's a disagreement. The situation that comes up more frequently is people forgetting what happened or what the direction was and thinking that perhaps it was something that they might have said or a colleague said. Um, well, that's why the, that's precisely why the summaries are good. And yes. I'm just saying after yeah. the summary comes out, what's the appeal process for that if we don't think if something was left out? Generally, someone will come to me and we'll. We so we could, just contact you about it. Yeah. That. And okay. we would go back and watch the video. But I haven't really we haven't had that really. Because no, we haven't. But you, you just need an appeal process for everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, come to the city the government, you need an appeal process for everything. <laughs> we'll watch the video and I'll look at yeah. my notes. I mean, and I, 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 I can't say and, I, I, yeah. I've been happy with them today. Yeah. But I can imagine when I a situation where I might not be and I want to know what I do about it. Yeah. If I'm not happy about it, I come and talk to you okay yes got it. yes all right yes. and the summaries <laughs> i think have really helped for that exact reason everyone's on the same page when the mayor summarizes it at the end of the study session so there's clarity given right then and there to the yeah. entire council well, and we raise for our hands exactly and say oh i thought something else yeah 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 okay um I guess we we another comment that I I um, we came up with recently another problem that arose recently was we had a you know we had a, a change of um, opinion after a study session and we have a proceed we had a procedure previously that was in a um, a change of decision that was in a um, a. Uh, a standard action, but it was silent on study sessions. So I'm glad to see this added in here because we do have, or we do have some pretty significant um, guidance given at study sessions, and um, so I think that's that's appropriate. Do we want to put any any kind of direction in here about the number of study sessions or the time between study sessions and an item coming to council? Um, I, I have found that to be an issue and, um, I, I think that, you know, for instance, we shouldn't have a study set to have a study session and then two years later have the action item come and have nothing in between or, or very little in between. That's a problem. Uh, so what's, I, I think, so may I, so I, I have, I think we we need to be careful not to be too prescriptive in the policy because we don't know what staff needs from us to proceed right so uh i okay. I'm, I'm a little anyway, reluctant to be I'm too prescriptive. anyway anyway i'm concerned about i am concerned about that time gap right and it's a you know it's a qualitative thing it's not that that, that um so mayor if i may um, if I look at the 2023 uh, list of study sessions, so I'm, I'm very mindful of what you said. We've talked about this as staff. All of the items that have come to you in 2023 and 2024, except for one, have been very timely in the same generally fiscal year or work plan cycle. So there are very few cases where there might be an item that comes uh, in one work plan cycle, but that might be carried over and then another couple of years. And the example I'm thinking of is R3, and we've, we've already talked about that already. But if I were to look at the rest of the items in 2023, it's, it's really items that you all are providing us direction on that are either coming back to you 
fairly shortly thereafter as a new business item, or in the case of the ledge program as, as a consent item ultimately, or you're giving direction like uh, on the, the revenue ballot measure and we're bringing it back to you a couple months later. So we have been mindful of that and we've tried to keep that timeline within either the fiscal year or the work plan cycle. Uh, so I think it's it would be hard to put a, a hard time frame around that, but just knowing that the way we are using study sessions now is really with the intention of bringing something back to council within short order and, and surely within that that work plan cycle. Well, well, um, Council Mayor, Member Ramirez, I, I would like to understand a bit more about the thought of uh, how some things would appropriately be handled in, um, in uh, uh, new business or existing business. That, I that, speak to the item we were, I was trying to speak to oh, the yeah. item. Right. <laughs> um, in terms of the number of study sessions, I, I think we're doing a, a fine number, and I would like to leave that to the discretion of the city manager and staff. In terms of the timeline between, maybe we could have some time where if it's over a certain amount of time, we would definitely get a memo. Yeah. That, that might be something we could add, just yes. so that it triggers it. And the memo would be a way for us to check in. You know, we could read the memo and we could get back to the city manager if we're like, now I think conditions have changed so much that we need to do something. That's my only comment. Okay, new subject. Oh, I, I was going to ask um, uh, uh, Councilmember Ramirez to talk a little bit about the, you know, the, the things that you think could be, uh, might be handled just as well in, um, uh, new business or um, existing business. Sure, no problem. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate the, the comment. I'm sorry for oh, getting off earlier. Um, so I, 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 I thought about a, a few examples where, unless the, the staff can help me understand why I'm wrong, um, new business may have been appropriate or, or desirable. And one example um, was the uh, firearm safety legislation where we were presented with a great deal of information that I think helped the council uh, come to um, the conclusion that staff had recommended for us. Um, you'll recall that I think, hopefully I'm getting the, the, the radii correct, but when we were talking about prohibiting uh, firearm sales within a certain number of feet um, of uh, a, a sensitive, use like a preschool or something um, we were basically given the options to implement that policy uh, where we knew it would not impact an existing uh, uh, firearms brick and mortar uh, or uh, to be more aggressive and actively seek to try and exclude some existing uh, arms dealers and the the impact of the latter would be tremendous right that would require extensive outreach there's, you have to figure out the amortization period and there's some like compensation elements to it. And when presented with those ops, staff had recommended the 250 feet, but there was the option to do more. And so what I had thought was it might have been actually a time savings for staff to prepare the 250 foot radius ordinance. And then one thing that I was thinking what we'd like to talk about there are typically alternatives provided at the end of a given new business item that are not really well developed. So for in this case, firearm safety ordinances do not introduce the ordinances or provide other direction. But one alternative that staff may want to elevate is you could do more than 250 feet, but it's not recommended because it would delay implementation by two years because you have to do all of this legal analysis and outreach and there's, you know, perhaps maybe not written in here, but a legal risk, um, you know, so that's an instance where I, I think I understand the utility of the study session, but it actually would have been more expeditious to come with the, the safe ordinance and then invite the council as an alternative, not recommended to uh, direct staff to come back with the more aggressive ordinance, but we would be fully um, uh, informed about the consequences of doing so. 
The other one that I thought a lot about was uh, the Caltrain grade separation projects. And I'm really glad um, the uh, uh, community development director, assistant city manager is here. It, it, I read through that and I thought your recommendations were very sound, <laughs> you know, and it was ambiguous to me about why a uh, why you couldn't have achieved substantially similar objectives with new business as opposed to a study session. So uh, if, if, I can, if I may speak first, actually. So um, I want to address the firearm legislation. So that, that was from 2022, mm -hmm. so a couple of years ago, and we've learned from that. Oh, so <laughs> that's why uh, maybe aside from the Caltrain item, which we actually did go back and forth about on whether it should be a new business or a study session, I think that hopefully was the only item to where it was like, you know, this probably could have fit just fine with new business. And so we've tried to tighten that up over the last year and a half just to make sure that it really is items that that wouldn't have uh, an easier path like you articulated. And then as to the Caltrain grade set project, um, we went back and forth on whether it should be a study session versus new business. And I'll let Dawn land on why we landed on a study session. All right, and it was a pretty pretty unique case that we don't take, typically face, but we were in the October, November timeframe when it became very, very clear this critical decision had to be made by council, but we as staff had not had a chance to do any analysis, any work to determine whether their staff had something rose to the top as the best direction forward and we were, you know, a part of agenda management and timing and everything. I had to tell the city manager that at this point, this could turn not into a staff recommendation. It could be a true policy decision because they both have benefits. They're both absolutely needed. There could be other considerations we had thought about. And we were, it was very fast paced. And the study session opened up the opportunity to have more open-ended discussion with council, more open-ended in terms of how council may want to proceed, because we weren't certain whether there would be a, you know, a clear direction that staff felt comfortable recommending. So by then, because study sessions can happen before the council, and then the council meeting agenda gets very full, by the time we could finish all of that analysis, which we were doing right up to we were writing it, and you know that three page in there, then it started to rise to the top. Oh, you know, based upon all of this, there is a staff recommendation and there is an alternative for Castro. We were developing all that last minute. So at that point, yes, we could have flipped it to new business, but there was the other aspect of a very full council agenda that we typically face. And so we left it a study session, but it would have been a last minute flip because, and so that does not typically happen. Yeah, and we really thought there there was so much, we thought there would be a lot of discussion among council about it just because of this binary choice that council had not been faced with before. And the fact that the, the funding, the cost increased by so much that we didn't want to come in with something fully baked for council to on such a important issue. So, you know, I would say if that's one of the only examples, you know, that's something we can certainly learn from. And if this policy is like something that you all choose to move forward with, we would look at the upcoming items through that lens. You know, is this truly something that could be a solid recommendation as a new business item? Or is this something that should be discussed? And, and I'll say too, you've all served as mayor. So you all know that frequently I may talk to you about, hey, what do you think? Could this be a study session item, new business item? You know, as things have come up in the past, I've done that. And we've done it in agenda reviews sometimes uh, with things that we know might be coming down the pike. So that also could come up sometimes is just kind of a, a organic discussion, you know, with the mayor may happen where it's like, you know, let, this probably is better for a study session. That happened more frequently in the past, but we've gotten tighter with it. And if you look at the items in 2023, they really were items that um, were a little more amorphous where we needed council direction first before coming back to you. Uh, one of the things that that I see here that we've done recently, uh, you know, and Ed is here and could speak to this, 
you know, the CIP program, possibly that's something too that that could be a new business item if it's recommendations from staff that that council would then react to as opposed to bringing it a study session. But if I if I were to look at the rest of the items that we've brought, they they need initial direction. And one of the things that uh, council was really clear about was we want to see items that allow us the ability to help shape them at the beginning. And so that's why a lot of these policy issues have come to you so that staff isn't moving full steam ahead or moving forward and then comes back with something that isn't really the policy direction or the scope of what council wanted. So I think that what the guidelines that are suggested, it kind of helps put that parameter on it and continuing to refine it and continuing to look at, you know what, this could be a new business item. And let's just turn the, the questions into a recommendation. Um, and I think this is, I mean, this is really good because we're still, we're learning and we can, we can change as we go and just keep improving it. Because ultimately the goal is to make it effective and efficient for you all to make your policy decisions. And so if if it is turning some of the things into new business, I think certainly we could be able to to look at that. Um, but your yeah, your two examples I would say are more anomalies than the norm. But right, I, I and I I didn't it, it intend to imply that this is a a, a major problem that's yeah. occurring systemically. Um, they were they were the two examples that came to mind when I had thought about the the question that the mayor asked. But I think. Uh, a, a good landing place is staff really needs to retain the, the discretion oh, yeah. to let us know the format that works best to get the information from us that they need to succeed, right? And sometimes it's a judgment call, um, you know, but but if if there are pretty clear um, recommendations, and sometimes there are, right? Sometimes the study session is very short because your recommendations are very thoughtful. Um, and you know, so that there, it reduces the administrative headache, but it also means that sometimes we could have seven monologues when we really didn't need to have seven monologues because we all agreed from the from the get-go. Um, so so retaining staff discretion is a comp uh, an important component. And really, I think part of the objective is how do we make sure that, you know, that, that the staff is getting what they really need to succeed and how discipline is a big part of that. But the questions too sometimes, you know, invite for a more, um, uh, the, the holistic conversation where it's very valuable, but we struggle <laughs> to produce something that reflects uh, the majority will and intent of the case. Well, this has been clarifying for me. I can't think, I can't say that I've been fairly happy with the way things have come, but I come to us, but I have to say the two that you uh, called out are ones that I could see could have come to us as new business, except for the last minute situation that you you uh, described. Um, like I said, the main thing and oh, the main thing I, I feel like we're not talking about the open ended nature, I think, is also a time when uh, members of the public particularly want want to weigh in. So I think I think that's one of the valuable things about study sessions, letting not only council people, but members of the public say things we might not expect. Um, and I feel like the straw polls, which you initiated, have helped us figure out what the majority will is. Um, I'm wondering, um, I'm wondering between these two, what you know, are there, is there a way to boil this down? Sure. I think uh, so. Very clearly, um, the committee doesn't like in special cases. <laughs> so um, I think we would eliminate that. Um, I, I uh, City manager? Yes. Can I help provide a path? Sure. sure. Okay. Wait, can I? Yeah, yeah of course. Before of course. we do that, I, I'd just like to kind of go back a little, so step back a little bit and talk about, okay, just I want to make sure I understand from my point of view, what are the purpose of study sessions? The purpose of study sessions are for items that need initial guidance. That's that's like the overall arching thing, the items that need initial guidance, or sometimes it's not initial guidance, sometimes it's midway guidance, but they need guidance. They don't need necessarily a specific action, they need guidance, okay? 
And then um, they also are better in an open-ended, they're supposed to be a, um, a, a provide for open-ended discussion um, from the public as well as council members. And then um, the, the questions that we're asked to answer are, are typically more general than in an approval process where we're told, you know, it's more binary, you know, yes or no on this. And then um, the other thing is that we use straw polls as a way to um, make sure that the, um, the comments that were just stated, but maybe not, um, uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, oratory on, uh, get, <laughs> get, 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 still get captured. So those are the kind of like the basic kernels of information that I'm hearing. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay, that good. All right, good. please go yeah. for it. Yeah, no, that was a good summary. So here's what I suggest that we can do. So if the committee desires, you can give staff direction to just go back and uh, make some of these updates that we talked about. So kind of reframe maybe that the first sentence take out in special cases, but reframe how it's worded. Or add language about the straw polls being taken. It, it is there. Oh. Yeah. So it's uh, the, oh, okay. the, the staff so part. The back page, the that. second page is oh, okay. almost Sorry, all the same. With yeah. first my bad. My bad. Oh, okay. Um, and then for two, subsection two, Roman numeral three, where it says avoid subjective terms, I would just add something in there that says open to interpretation. I mean, that's what you're trying to get at. So. I, we might not need those examples, but what you're what you're what you're getting at is jargon, you know, and subjective terms where people can think very differently about a term like high growth and be voting on something, but the term itself isn't really defined. And so I, I think yeah. we can get so so yes, I, I think you're right. Oh, subject to interpretation. I mean, the, these are examples that came to mind because of the R3 there study session, yeah. but there, there's a lot of other language in there. I was reading through the the, um, the summary provided by the city clerk and, you know, sensitive transitions to neighborhoods. These are, those are the things that we voted on. But I think if you were to ask, you know, what each of those things may mean, we, you might get different opinions, even from the members of the majority. Um, do you think it's helpful to include examples? We can go back and talk about it, maybe. I, I wouldn't want to be so prescriptive about the terminology, but um, some of this, because it's, again, more value-based and initial direction, um, defining it would require a certain amount of staff work to come up with, with mm -hmm. what options of how you can provide sensitive trans transitions. But if we're early enough in a project we may, we may not be ready to give you examples, but we know that that is something you value. So now we know we need to yes. explore it and, and come up with how that could be accommodated. Because again, it's more study session, it's more general direction. When we come back, we will be defining what, what, what we heard and what we determined would be sensitive transition and then Council has an opportunity to let's say yes, that is the direction I intended, or you know, what about this or that? There's, I think there's probably a middle way where, if if that is a value we can reasonably anticipate, maybe some example, you know, photographs. You know, here are some examples of transitions that were very gentle or very harsh. <laughs> you know, and so at least there's a preliminary understanding from the council. That's kind of what we mean. We don't have development standards what we, we can sort of see that's what what a sensitive transition might look like and say, figure out what the numbers are based on this image. Well, what I'm hearing is very technical terminology that may not be quite understood across the board. And one person might think sensitive transition means one thing or high growth. So I think to me, I believe that we as staff can do our work in the staff report and defining what some of these things are, especially if they're very technical and, and or jargony. And we can make sure that we're framing the questions in a way that avoid, certainly we will because it's gonna be in the policy, but just avoid any inference of, oh, well, I thought it meant this, but I thought it meant that. What are we all voting on? 
So we can make sure that in the staff report itself that we're we're making sure that we're doing a better job or a good job defining some of these terms or terminology. So would the committee prefer another pass at this? Or do you think that with this and then modifications recommended by staff yeah. would be ready to go to the full council? I I would take what the sit I would have the city manager elucidate a little more what she was recommending. Okay. So I think if you give us direction to kind of go back and incorporate the language into the pol if the rest of the policy that was drafted is okay with the committee, because this is only one section, section 14, and we can go back through and make sure that we're making these little tweaks and changes, and then the full policy itself would then come to council on consent. Uh, we can do that, and then I can make sure either myself or Audrey to we'll speak to the council members about this too, and, and what they're going to see and what it is. And really, this is a refinement. I mean, and that's the way that I'm looking at this. And I think this can be really helpful going forward for both council and staff just to know here's the parameters that we're going to bring study sessions in, and just even as an executive team, we're constantly talking about how we can frame items before council that are going to help you make the best decisions and framing staff reports and getting better at, at doing things or tweaking it based on the feedback you all have given us. So I think uh, this would just be something that we will start to ingrain within staff of this, you know, council direction. This is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to set up the questions. You've probably noticed that we've really tried to pull back on the number of council questions. Mm -hmm. In the past, you all may have had four and five questions, and we really try and limit it to no more than three now. So it's at least focused, and you all can give the best direction possible. So I think if if that's the frame framework that we look at this as, this is going to help all of us understand how we can do study sessions in the future and how we're going to summarize the direction, how we're going to bring the staff reports, how you're going to do your draw polls, what you can do if you want to change your votes. I think that if you give us that direction, we'll we'll bring it back and, and I can talk to council members about it. The other four. So I just want to check back. Well, one thing that I think the first page is different. The second page, there are only two things. The majority uh, three one had the word majority added, and then there was something about what to do if a council member changed their mind at a study session. I think yes, those are the only two changes. It's the same, is it? Same in both. That's the same in both. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, but I thought there was some additional direction, maybe I'm wrong. Um, and then, but as for the first page, I just wanted to make sure since this was something that you had worked on. Is that summary? Does that sound good, or would yeah. you like it to come back to the seat? Let me. So I, 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 I don't have a. If we're anticipating significant modifications, then it, was, it should probably come back for a second pass. If it's, um, I'll, I'll, I'm going to attempt a motion, right? That we uh, approve the revisions. Yes. Oh, Mayor, yes. do you want to add some things? Um, I, I was just going to say that that. Um, I think that again, that the number of questions is a matter of staff discretion. Right. And um, it's fine to have five questions. It just depends on the subject. So um, I, I wouldn't worry about that. I would just worry about um, are the questions, um, uh, you know, are they clear? And sometimes you'll have, you know, one, one A, one B. Uh, I mean, we could name one as five. Don't worry about that. Just if they're clear. I actually agree. Well, yeah. one, one example that I was thinking about is the economic vitality strategy study session, which it, it, I think had two questions. We're, we're asked to evaluate the entire draft document. So yeah, one exactly. it's maybe one question, but it's yeah. on 120 some odd action yeah, items yeah. at that time. That's so, hard. So, so yeah. Okay. Well, that's helpful. Yeah. Okay. Because that's different than prior direction. Mm -hmm. So that's helpful. Uh, okay, so 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 leaving that that the, the number of question really staff has the discretion to ask the questions that they think will get the information from the council that they need. That's that's kind of yeah. where okay. I think we that's would land. Right. So it would be to um, uh, so I, I'm open to to uh, suggestions, but basically that we would move to recommend this revised text explicitly eliminating in special cases um, and then uh, 
emphasizing or clarifying that straw polls would be an integral component of uh, synthesizing council direction um, that uh, we would, and this is under two, two, three, um, uh, modify that language to uh, what the city manager had recommended, which I think was avoiding terms that are subject to interpretation. I think that was the language I'd heard um, to make other revisions as the uh, city manager sees fit with the intent to clarify or um, you know, make this more operationally uh, viable. <laughs> Um, and then um, trying to remember if there was one other. The purpose of this is there's not anything like the public. Oh, okay. So that we wouldn't, yes, that we would uh, explicitly reference the intent to uh, invite the public to uh, provide input into the study session as well. So that would be, that would, and so okay. that, that feels like. It's sorry, uh, Mayor. Well, I would like to also add to the purpose the idea that that study sessions have a. a, a this is from the the, the staff. Yeah, yeah, that that the study sessions have a purpose to um, provide an opportunity to discuss policy measures that bring in the idea that this is to get initial guidance. Um, it's is it in there? So uh, it's in one and not the other. So the something first like that. A under 14A, it says that it's to get, uh, okay, for the council to discuss policy matters for which there are a range of options regarding policy scope. And this is to your point, Mayor, scope would be the initial part, the scope of the, an item, the approach that you want staff to take or the certain direction that you want staff to go and or any specific policy era elements for which we're seeking interim feedback or direction. So we could say initial or interim feedback. Yeah, I think that would be good. I think that yeah, um, to just kind of talk about where it is typically in the process, um, it, it would be valuable. I, I would suggest, so in the revised <laughs> language, that might be a revision under what's one three. Uh, so it, it would, it would expand or modify that text to include a reference to interim updates as well. Well, it could be, but I just feel like that's, you know, that's what we, that's what these are for, to get initial guidance. That's what they're for. Right. So I don't think we should bury it. I think it should be what's stated right up there. But, but, but some, we, we also use study sessions to achieve things that are unrelated to guidance, well, right? Yeah, so like, like generally, interviews. That's true, but generally, well, yeah, so we could say that in one. Okay. Yeah. Be number one. <laughs> Be number one. Sure. <laughs> okay. I think there was also a recommendation that I liked. I don't know if we want to include it in the policy formally, but if um, a great deal of time has elapsed between study sessions um, and a council hasn't, I, I don't know if we want to be firm on a number, but if, you know, basically the staff would be advised to prepare maybe an off agenda memo or a series of briefings to keep the council updated if there are significant yeah. changes. So is there a recommendation to include that in the policy? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So then that would be again okay, that that would be a staff discretion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're not we're, we're not specifying the the but just a suggestion. Like, yeah. yeah. Um would it be helpful to repeat that attempt at a motion. I, I think we got it between Audrey and I. Yeah, I believe we got it. Okay. And then the purpose one that Pat uh, highlighted should be so, number one rather than number three. So yes, yeah, we, we can move this around. We can say maybe what is currently number three would become number it's one. The main one. It's maybe. the most important one. Um, and and then with the revisions that we were talking about to clarify, yeah, this yeah. would apply also to interim. I would like that better. Thank you. Sure. No problem. <laughs> okay, I second. Thank you. Any other discussion or questions? Any clarifications from staff? I have a clarification. So to be clear, are you all okay with us bringing it back to council on consent or would the committee prefer to review it again? I think that's your discretion, Lucas. I, I'm okay. With, baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I feel like the... The modifications that we're making are pretty clear and not not, not requiring a, a, re, a total revision. So I'm I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, all right, if there are no other questions or clarifications, then all in favor? That passes unanimously. Thank you very much, staff, for preparing this and for walking us through this. I hope um, it was helpful. <laughs> Um, okay, we will now proceed to uh, 5.2 uh, revisions to Council Policy A16, positions on ballot measures and legislative advocacy. Assistance to the City Manager slash uh, Intergovernmental Relations Manager, Christina Gilmore, will present this item. Chair, good afternoon. Chair and Council, um, the item you have before you this afternoon is a revision to Council Policy A16, positions on ballot measures and legislative advocacy. Um, Council Policy A16 provides guidance and criteria for how the council considers taking formal actions on ballot measures or state and legislative uh, state and federal legislative positions. Um, the council um, has an adopted legislative platform that also, in addition to the council policy, provides the council with guidance on. Um, how and when the mayor or staff takes positions on federal or legislative advocacy. Um, at times, the council has been approached by members of the public to take positions on matters of foreign policy or international relations. It has been the council's practice to not um, advocate or take positions on those items. However, the council policy um, has not formally reflected that position. So uh, the um, proposed changes you have before you today for um, Council Policy A16, um, that's two things. One, it clarifies the role of the adopted state for the legislative platform. It's now that since 2022, the council has adopted and will con continue to adopt an annual platform. And then two, formalizes the existing practice of not taking um, positions on international relations or on affairs. So those changes are contained in section two of the policy, um, and specifically for the formulating existing practice of not taking a stance on international relations or foreign affairs is contained in section two with a new item four and five um, that clarifies those positions. Um, so with that, that concludes my presentation and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. I do need to return briefly to the previous item because I made an error since this is a meeting with a virtual component. I think we will require a formal roll call vote. So my apologies. Uh, so this was for the motion I made with the second from committee member Hicks regarding item uh, 5.1 revisions to council policy 813. I, th I think you're actually okay uh, the way you did it, but um, because we, we have we have the video um, showing, okay. showing all of that. So I've, I've Thank you for the clarification. No, no I, I saw that I, I think I needed to invite you to take the roll call, but if we're if we're okay, then okay. I'll yeah. proceed. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Um, and my apologies to uh, to Ms. Gilmore. Um, do committee members have any questions before I open this item to the public? Questions. Um, if there are no questions, then would any member of the public like to provide comment on this item? If so, please submit a blue card, or if on Zoom, click the raise hand feature or dial star nine on your phone. We have one, Bruce England. Thank you all. Um, Bruce England, Wisman Station Drive. I wanted to talk about the second bullet point formalized existing practice of not taking a stance on international relations and foreign affairs. Um, I've spoken to this quite a bit recently, specifically on what's happening in Gaza. So I won't repeat what I've said and what others have said. However, what I would like to repeat and emphasize is that we don't live in a vacuum here in Mountain View. So we create these pretty much arbitrary borders uh, between what the city does and what happens in the larger world. It's As you know, it's a very complicated world, sometimes very messy, sometimes very dysfunctional. And to disconnect ourselves from those external processes, in my view, would be a mistake. And I think that you can operate case by case, this doesn't happen very often, but in trying times it comes up. And this is one of those periods in time where you're asked to respond. You have been asked to respond. You did. And that's the way the system ought to work. I think by setting rules that then tie the hands of future council members and yourselves for the time being is just not the way you should go. Just deal with these things case by case as you always have. Don't hamper 
future council members with additional rules around things like this. That's my view, and I will say I feel very strongly about it. Thank you. We also have Clara Joseph. Hi. Um, similar to Bruce, I'm I'm just commenting on this. I, I'm really disappointed and alarmed to learn about this push um, to further formalize um, this policy and practice of not taking a stance on international relations and foreign affairs. I strongly disagree with this and find it to be dismissive and repressive. I see such a policy being used as a scapegoat for any issue that council and staff finds too controversial or too much of a nuisance to deal with. My question is, how are foreign affairs and international policy going to be defined? Who decides what impacts Mountain View and Mountain View residents? We don't live in a vacuum, like Bruce said. We are connected to the outside world in so many ways. We all know that our economy and climate are deeply tied to national and international affairs and policies. So again, who gets to define foreign affairs and international policies? This seems subjective and again, an easy scapegoat. I think it actually restricts everyone's ability to make informed decisions in regards to policies. If we want to make ethical and informed decisions, we need to be thinking about how everything is connected. This should impact financial investment decisions. If we are a city that values human rights, then we should make sure we are investing in companies that do not violate human rights. If we value the environment and the climate for future generations, then dis discussions need to be had about how the military and industrial complex is a huge problem that impacts us here in Mountain View, given its catastrophic amount of carbon emissions annually. These are just some examples, and I'm trying to express that these, there are Mountain View issues, whether or not you want them to be. Um, you know, what's happening in Gaza and Palestine is one issue, and if you want to apply this just because of that, it, it just seems absurd to me. And when residents come to you all concerned about different issues, hoping to find leadership and guidance and an instead met with doubling down on policy and direct opposition to our asks, it is incredibly disheartening and disappointing and really leads to people being jaded, fed up with the systems at play and pushes residents to be less engaged. So please don't go forward with these proposed changes and formalization. I think it would be a mistake. Um, and that's all for me, thanks. Thank you very much. And thank you to members of the public who have participated in this item. I have a quick question for staff. Can a majority of the city council at any time elect to deviate from an adopted council policy? That is a great it's probably question. City probably a better question for the CEO. I don't know. I, I would imagine if it's the whole council the, or the majority of councils, since council sets the council policies, you could. Yeah, it's not on an agenda. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's not on an agenda. What were you saying? If it's on an agenda. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. It can be done on the fly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. if, it's the, if it's at least four of you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I have comments, but not questions. All right, go for it. So I've lived in Mountain View for, so I'm uh, going to vote against the, the last part, the uh, red lines number four, the ones on foreign policy and international affairs, because I've lived in Mountain View for 25 years now. And as far as I know, it's only been twice that people have come to council uh, to talk about foreign policy. One was when the Iraq war had not yet started. The second Iraq war, not the first Iraq war. Um, and then now with the Israel and Gaza situation. And I thought council, you know, council made the decisions that they made and explained them perfectly well without this. I didn't agree with it either time, but um, perfectly well without having our without banning ourselves from speaking on it. And I don't think, I think that things that happen internationally do affect us locally. One of the big ways is that we, we're a country that spends a tremendous amount on you know, distributing weapons abroad. And the last time that, that we had public speakers speak on the Israel and Gaza situation in front of us, right before that, I think if I remember right, there was a study session where we were talking about affordable housing and maybe homelessness as well. You know, countries that spend less on weapons tend to spend, have more money to spend on particular, on transportation infrastructure, mass transit, 
on housing and homelessness. And this is a policy that ends up affecting us. I also think that that um, people are increasingly questioning the wars we're involving ourselves in um, and that there are moral issues. Um, and then there's also blowback, which is what 9-11 was, for instance. Um, and so I think there are a number of things that, um, I think there are a number of ways that it affects us locally. And I, th I, I think that we can work through this and discuss or not discuss it without formally banning ourselves, banning council from discussing it. So I would prefer not to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, there's two things that, that um, I think of that are sort of part of our existing system of work that there really are long, um, parts. One is um, we have two sister cities, you know, um, uh, Alsat, uh, Belgium, or Haslet, Haslet, Belgium. Haslet. Okay, visit, I guess. Um, <laughs> and um, and Awada, Japan. And we have had, you know, particularly with Japan, we've had the, a very warm and cordial um, uh, relationship with them. In a sense, that's a foreign affair. Um, uh, I think we all feel like it's a positive one, but it's foreign affair, right? You know, uh, it's, it's 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 outside of this country. And then another thing is um, the very nature of our economy. Um, we have business connections all over the uh, all over the world, and do welcome people from other countries here to do business. I mean, I recently spoke, for instance, at a byproduct fast press con. I conference, which was a, um, a a group of Scandinavian companies who, who come to Silicon Valley on a regular basis to uh, do work. And we have a lot to learn from them, particularly on sustainability issues. So, and yet, you know, I, I feel like uh, issues of war and providing for the common defense, um, which are, you know, the two things you mentioned are the Iraq war and Gaza, are are very clearly not in our, you know, they're not in our purview. So I, you know, on the one hand, I when I first read this, I thought it was okay, and then when I thought about it some more, I thought, well, maybe not because there's so many layers to this. So I, I, I haven't really, I don't quite know where to land at the moment. Thank you. Maybe you can convince her. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, so I, I have um, the, a general philosophy about council policies. The council policies, we can't legally bind the hands of a future council. The only way we could do that is by placing a, an amendment to the charter that the voters approve. That's the only way we can truly tie the hands of a future council. Um, so if a majority of the council wants to deviate from a policy, they're free to do so. Any you know given council meeting, a majority can say we want to do something different from what the council policy stipulates, um, and we can even write in some flexibility here if if the committee would would prefer. Um, I think council policies actually are more valuable and protective for the staff who sometimes may be placed in a position where there's a judgment call to be made or there's some discretion, and without some guidance, there aren't very many good ways to discern what does a majority of the council really want to do. Um, so in my op opinion, right, the, the organization can be protected. The staff who actually, a lot of who do the work um, are protected by a council policy that provides some guidance for how to respond in a certain context. So in this case, I think the, the value of this is to make clear that when the staff are in a position to prepare the, the, the city's uh, advocacy platform or uh, a, a position on a given matter, you know, that is outside of the immediate boundary of the city, then, you know, they can turn to this policy or to the legislative platform for, for guidance. And so what the way I think this could, what this could do is, you know, if as staff, future staffs prepare future legislative uh, advocacy platforms for future councils, they would look at this policy and say, oh, well, it's pretty clear that the council really intends for us not to include a position um, 
pertaining to foreign matters. City Council can say, well, the policy notwithstanding, we really want to take a position on a given issue. So I, I feel like this is, it, we, we just legally can't deny a future council an opportunity to weigh in on a given matter if they really want to. But I do think this has value for staff in the preparation of policy documents that have to go to council for approval um, because they got to start somewhere. They need some level of guidance. And this provides some guidance where none currently exists on a very narrow uh, range of issues, right? The Most of the time we're not contemplating international matters or foreign matters because it's very rare that we will need to. Um, but uh, this would basically provide a, a clear uh, reference point for staff on if this becomes something that they they do need to think about. So uh, that was a little uh, convoluted, but I think I see this as, as helpful for staff and not actually tying the hands of a future council. I think it has merit, at least some of the other recommendations too. If a majority of the body does not wish to include four, that's okay. Uh, four and I guess maybe five. Um, but uh, I think it also... It, it it can be challenging for a community that insists on a council taking a position on a matter. Uh, there is no guidance for them either. And so they will continue to ask and the council can continue to sit there and do nothing <laughs> as we have been doing for the past several months. And that's okay too. Um, I feel I feel there is some value in this, at least from, from a, a guidance to staff perspective. We did issue a statement. So we did that. Right, which would- So we did take a bit. Well, that, that was the majority- Very wishy-washy position, but, but we but, did. But the council, the council did that, right? Like the council rec recommended to staff that you know, something be prepared in light of significant public interest, but they wouldn't have done that without explicit permission from the council. Do you remember Hicks? Um, so I, I just don't see this as a significant problem that staff's been struggling with that we need to put in writing. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but also, um, I, I'm not clear on the legal implications. So the statement that the majority of council did want to put out, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's a, I mean, I feel like I would have to talk to the city attorney to know if we could do even that in the future, or whether it would be a multi-step process. I don't know. I don't think you have to have a rule about everything. I guess, um, uh, um, you know, I, at first I thought this was a really good idea. <laughs> the more I, think about it, I think, well, wait a minute, there are all these other things. And, um, you know, we do, we, we have, we have a community that has so many people in it who just moved here from other, um, you know, from other countries and, you know, we do have a long-standing practice of uh, being very welcoming. That, that's, you know, that's our, I mean, that's kind of our role. And we, we, we ask very seriously. So I don't know, I'm just a little, I don't think we need a, maybe we don't need, we could stay silent on this. Can we just stay silent on it? Well, so I've been thinking as you all are talking and when this came up in item eight, Council unanimously referred this to this yeah. committee, saying that you wanted to explore taking a statement against uh, or making a statement that you would not uh, consider for policy matters. So if this committee chooses not to, then I think that the chair will need to report that out to the body. And then if other council members feel differently, it would need to be discussed as a council and not in this committee. Uh, so I mean, sure you could choose to do nothing, uh, but again, this was referred to this committee by everyone to do something. So yeah, maybe people have changed their minds also, or just kind of feel differently or want more time to be introspective about it. But yeah, I think the chair would need to report it out and then see if, uh, I was feeling the same or strongly, or if you all want to discuss it as a body. How about an amendment? So four would would include an explicit indication that a majority of the council 
may elect to take formal position on behalf of the city if we would need to figure out some but ways. We can, here, but we can look at the wording, but it, this would not preclude preclude a majority, majority of council, council taking uh, uh, a position on a matter of importance to the city or yeah. something like that. Wow. So that gives an out. Right. So it would be almost kind of like in general, the city council wouldn't take positions on foreign policy matters. However, a majority of council may choose to take a position on a matter that's important to the city. And and yet, on the other hand, we we you know we support like matters of friendship, like the sister cities, the sister cities program. Yeah. That that um, I think has a very um, good track record, and people are really. It's a good idea. Am I alone in that? I mean, in thinking that, yeah, I mean, don't we do that's, that's sort of an example of how this well, would be viewed? Well, it's a great example to your point of our uh, extension of it's it's more of a governance uh, with sister cities. It's it's as you're to your point, it's a friendship um, exchange of ideas, culture, how we do things, and it's it's certainly a and like a nation building or community yeah. building from that aspect. But I wouldn't suggest that it's similar to taking a position on like a really heavy foreign policy issue. But you're right, cities do have relationships with sister cities. Most cities do, but it, that's more of a, yeah, we, and we wouldn't comment on foreign policy issues that are occurring in those countries. So it's more no. of a exchange of ideas exchange of information, uh, it's relationship building, really. Well, could we strengthen our, you know, our government? I mean, wait a minute, let me look back here and look at this. I mean, really what we want to do, we want to say that we focus on state and federal issues because that's what we focus on. We, we don't, Local, st local, state, and yeah, local and state. That's really what we and, focus on, yeah. and that. Uh, so you want to say that we focus on state in our legislative platform? We focus on state and local issues, and that to um, add any positions or actions in support of or opposition to foreign policy or international affairs, it would take. It would take, we have some words, it would take, did you say the majority of council? Nobody knows that's true. <laughs> Anything takes the majority. I don't know. I, 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 that's I, what somebody I, had said. Yeah. I think um, it needs more. I think I need more thought on so, this. So we have it in the purpose already, yeah. to your point, Mayor. So it's a great point, and we do, it, it is captured. It's in the purpose of the policy, exactly what you're saying. Where is the purpose? Um, do you look at one? The purpose is to establish a policy governing positions on ballot measures and state and federal policy. Oh. So that's exactly what the mayor just said, that it's focused on state and federal policy. Well, it could... Number four could say the city council does not generally take positions or actions in support of our opposition. Well, the city council generally does not take, take positions um, regarding foreign policy and international affairs. I mean, we generally don't. I, I don't know if we ever have. And then we could just say, however, the council majority may choose to take position on a matter or policy matter that is of importance to the city. Yeah, that would be fine. I mean, I, I, it's not a general part of our legislative platform. It's certainly not something that we're constantly doing. I would, you know, it would have to be an an exception. Right. I guess what what one way to think about this is in future. Uh, legislative advocacy platforms, the staff would then have guidance not to think so broadly, you know, right. beyond oh, yeah, federal matters. Yeah, generally I'm fine. Now, but if a majority of the city council says, we really want to include in our federal, or 
I guess, now international <laughs> legislative platform, a reference to something that is of importance to the, to the community. Sure. You know, they retain, to clarify that they retain that discretion to do so. Um, I did want to ask, since this policy is before us, if um, there would be support in eliminating 2A1C, um, which is something that we did in the most recent update to the legislative uh, oh, yeah, we're platform. Back to that. 1C is intended to protect or increase local control. We, we explicitly eliminated that in the legislative okay. platform. Yeah, Let's get rid of that. I need a motion. Yes, a motion. Yes. I move to um, uh, strike uh, is intended to protect or increase local control. Are we doing each one separately? Well, would, would, would you be willing to move the other modification as well? I'm not sure what the other modification was. So, no. so to amend for the new red line four to uh, include language allowing a majority of the city council to take a position on a matter of importance. No, I really think we should just strike four and five too. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. So then the, the motion That's would be much. to uh, recommend to the full city council uh, the revised policy eliminating 2A, 1C and red line four and red line yes. five. I'm sorry. I know I was one of the ones that voted. Uh, red line four and five. <laughs> so four was just a staff suggestion. So we would just wouldn't right. even take that to council. Okay. And then five, you are saying that you wouldn't include the terms foreign policy or international affairs issue. So it would just remain the same, right? Yeah. Five. Yeah. So so you're not taking any action on anything related to foreign policy. So we would just make that clear in the in the SAC report. Mm -hmm. And then if council chooses to pull it, override and then you have colleagues <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And you can, okay. you would discuss it at that time, which I will expect that there will be a discussion on 2A1C. So, because it is in your ledge platform with an asterisk. So, we, I is. thought we got rid of that. I thought we just took it out. Ms. Gilmore, we, we worked pretty that. hard to get that out. <laughs> so, so, in 2022, the council adopted an asterisk on certain policy statements with the legislative platform mm -hmm. that indicated that. Um, yeah, we would uh, monitor, support, or oppose legislation that was um, would affect local control. And so, um, for this year, for 2024, the council um, elected to remove those asterisks that were contained. I think on I can't recall the number of policy statements. Um, however, I don't know that the um, asterisk was meant to as the council, the council council direction was meant to eliminate local control from other policy statements. So that's a question as yeah, city manager McCarthy has just stated that we have to go back to the council for a discussion. But the asterisks were eliminated from the legislative platform. So it was a, a prior council action. And then the new council action was to, to the, the prior council action was to add the asterisks. And then the new council action was to remove that, which is what sound was done. So what were the asterisks for again? <laughs> I have to go back and look at the 2022 and 2023 adopted legislative platform, but I recall there was um, a motion to add the asterisk uh, that referred to local control to a number of policy statements within the adopted platform from 2022 and 2023. Because essentially we wanted you to evaluate whether it would affect the, the legislative legislative statements would affect local control, either positively or negatively. Yeah. The, the asterisk was pretty clearly designed to facilitate city opposition or neutrality on housing and land use things, land use issues that would preempt local control. The reason why I don't think this is appropriate is because we actively facilitate things like ADUs, which are a preemption of local control. And the council, you know, supported um, using mm -hmm. SB 35 on city owned property and facilitating AB 2162 for the Danco project. 
like we're we're telling people to use the state preemptions, and I I feel like it's it's incredibly um, confusing to on the one hand say we categorically you know oppose these preemptions, and then on the other hand to facilitate and direct folks to use them. You know, I think on a like kind of like the where we're landing with the federal with the foreign affairs thing, case by case basis. If the staff says this is a real problem, they recommend opposition. Totally get it. We could consider that, but the categorical opposition doesn't make sense. Was that a second? No, I was going <laughs> to make a comment. Oh, sure. uh, I'm raising my hand. My apologies. Um, that's right. Yeah, that's basically what I was going to say. That I've seen it move more towards a case by case yeah. basis and in particular when i was mayor and spent time with the mayors from all the cities in the county i became more familiar with the stance that in you know kind of more affluent communities where where actually a lot of corporate leaders who make decisions on who to hire and so from when to do layoffs but the mayors were saying they're you know there's no homeless people in our area. We shouldn't have to do anything on this. And so it kind of kind of leads me to understand where from time to time, although I like local control, I'm a planner. I like to control things. But it does seem that from time to time, people are frankly shirking their responsibilities. And, you, and from time to time, you do need more state control. So I'm seeing it as a case by case situation. I think we what we would need to do, because this is just one aspect of the policy, this is just uh, the position on ballot measures and then state and federal advocacy, uh, what we can do. So the direction I'm hearing, I guess you have to yeah, but so far where you've landed is to delete um, the 2A1C local control item. And then we just would not include any of the newly drafted language that staff provided. For four and five. I think for, we were accepting yeah, the other, other four and five. And then uh, Audrey has a suggested edit to a uh, language. The two um, A1C, because there are some areas where we really do have a strong position to um, uh, retain local control and the ballot measure um, the California Business Roundtable proposed ballot measure that like would basically oh revenue, revenue. Yeah, but that I think that's included yeah. under B right protect or increase local revenues. I think so. I I agree with with uh, Committee Member Hicks that this removes a categorical opposition and allows for staff discretion to say, you know, this one's fine. We've already been doing this. We're happy to support it because it's been helpful to the city. But over here, you know, this preemption is a problem and here's why so well, it allows that discretion but it'd be better to say protect or increase local control as appropriate or something like that i mean well so that would that would you know that would bring in the case-by-case -case evaluation part i really think this is going to be a policy question yeah. for you all on how you how you think of local control i'm gonna quote my mayor and say you don't need a rule for everything and in this case, having <laughs> an explicit prohibition against supporting things that preempt local control doesn't feel consistent with how we've actually been you know, using some of the state preemptions that have been created. Ms. Ramberg, what was your suggestion? Um, that if you wish to acknowledge the case-by-case -case nature of it as part of the policy, rather than just something that staff knows that it can do, you could change C to say something like is intended to identify um, opportunities where it is consistent with council's policy direction to retain global control. I think that's a good attempt, but I don't I don't know that it's any more clear than just yeah. crossing it out. And it could also fall into G. I mean, G is kind of the catch-all category of oh yeah, whatever the city manager, if, if the city manager, i.e. also staff, knows that it's consistent with the policy direction that the council is moving. Now I will say that uh, there are some times where a, a council member 
might be interested in legislation and they might come talk to staff or myself mm -hmm. and we know it may not be consistent. And so, you know, it doesn't move forward as a city supported position or opposition. Um, and generally we will just watch legislation if there's something of interest. Uh, so, and, and you certainly can do this to be consistent and we would just bring this forward and assuming it will be full, it's just more of a heads up and you all can have that policy discussion at that time. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mayor, would you like to restate the motion and then we'll see if there, I, I don't think there has been a second yet. Did you state the motion? I second. Oh, you did? I, okay. Well, no, I'm doing that right now because I think I understood. It was to basically. Cross them both out. Yeah, it was basically um, uh, crossing out uh, AIC and um, four, four, and five. And, and that and red, that's the red oh, part, the red of, part of, of five. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But, but but just to be clear, this wouldn't even come to council because this was just staff's recommendation for this committee. So yes, but I think we also heard that you would need to include in the staff report that the committee evaluated the direction provided by the full council to include language what like that. What we would do is we would probably just state that. We okay. wouldn't include the language that yeah. staff proposed okay. and that would be rejected. Sure. We would just say that in the staff report that the committee chose not to move forward with that. Uh, a, a general statement about getting involved in foreign, foreign policy related matters. We'll figure out how to word and send it, but we would just state that in the staff report. We wouldn't include this language at all. But you will say the that we eliminated AIC. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, and so we'll take the roll call. All right. Mayor uh, uh, Schwalter. Aye. Council Member Hicks? Yes. Chair Ramirez? Yes. Aries 3 0. Thank you very much. Um, so now we will uh, thank you for the presentation and for uh, guiding us through that conversation. Uh, we'll now move to 5.3 routine council policy and procedures agenda topics. Deputy City Manager Kimberly Thomas to present this informational item. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we wanted to advise the committee that there are two outstanding items that you will be addressing this fiscal year. Uh, the balance of your items, which include five, uh, uh, have been completed uh, as of the action here today. And so those items will be looking to be scheduled in May or June. And that includes the shoreline ticket item. That is something that we've had on our list for a, a while. It is not an overly urgent matter, so um, it will be scheduled for that time. In addition, there will be an uh, open-ended, at least as far as I understand it right now, uh, discussion of addressing Zoom bombing uh, to get some additional feedback uh, from the committee. Uh, and so that will be uh, our city manager, Anna McCarthy, is jumping in to advise on that. So I would just say, when this came up, the last meeting that you all had, what was it, four meetings ago when the Zoom bombing happened? It, it does, I know, it's that long ago, right? Same thing. Three meetings? The three anyway, meetings? Yeah. Time, time, memorable. Time is, time is just a construct to me, okay? So however long ago it was. Um, but we, you know, knock on, this is classic, but knock on wood, haven't received any other Zoom bombing since then. So. Citywide, we've received feedback, had their Zoom bombing, and then council had one too. So I, I would just say, talk about this, or you can kind of table it unless it becomes something that you feel is actually an issue for the council. So just leave that to your discretion. Do you want feedback now? Well, sure. Well, we, I mean, so we, we do have to go to the public. <laughs> um, so any other questions on this item? Oh, discussion. Okay, so well, let's uh, first, uh, before we get to discussion, would any member of the public like to provide comment on this item? If so, please submit a blue card, or if on Zoom, click the raise hand feature or dial star nine on your phone. We have one, Bruce England. Thank you all. Bruce England again, Westman Station Drive. Okay, I wasn't anticipating this would come up in your meeting, the Zoom bombing thing. Um, yeah, I think it's already been sort of alluded to here in the introduction, but it happened really once at council meeting um and then there was another instance where it came up briefly too at another city meeting and that's it and so it hasn't really been a problem so i will just 
voice support for tabling this item and then just seeing how it goes. You know, there are going to be disruptions. That's just the world's a messy place once again. And these things will come up occasionally. And I don't think you should worry too much about it unless it becomes a truly ongoing issue over an extended period of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any of the other members of the public? Thank you. Um, so we'll now proceed to deliberation. I did want to, um, so I, I, I had sent an email to the city clerk, which I think you had received also city manager, um, suggesting that this might be broadened to amending the policy to explicit the, the council uh, meeting governance policy to it, at least reference that we allow virtual participation because right now the council policies are totally silent on virtual participation and it might be good at least to have some parameters for or first the, the council has a policy saying it is our preference to allow virtual participation and then to uh, provide parameters on when and where is it literally every meeting is it just council meetings is it just council and subcommittee meetings because right now there's an inconsistency as we know as members of the CNC, the CNC does not have a virtual participation, mm. but the CPPC does. So it might be good. Um, I, I don't feel that there there is urgency in this, but I do think it might be valuable to have staff uh, come back at some point with some tactical updates to existing policy to recognize and formalize virtual participation. Is that fair? So are you seeing that as a different item or a modification of this item? Modification of this item. Okay. Okay, so it's, you want an item on virtual participation, our policy for virtual participation at meetings, which could include some discussion of, of addressing Zoom help. Sure, so it would be the, the, the scope of discussion would be wider than just Zoom bombing. bombing. It would be, we should probably modernize our policy to recognize that we have hybrid meetings because right now we have no policy. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, right after we had that, the, the next, I think was agenda um, review meeting, we had a little discussion about the logistics of how we were going to handle it. It seems like we've got a good plan now. So I, I think we're, we're good, you know, we're ready to handle it. So. Um, so I think that's where we need to be right now and that's okay. Um, and um, uh, I can see how in, you might want to, I don't know, if staff thinks it would be useful to have a, a, a procedure on um, virtual participation, we could definitely have one. I think everybody's kind of for it, but <laughs> you're right, it's not in here. <laughs> Do we need a procedure on that? I mean, what would the procedure, what, what value would the procedure provide? Does staff have a- It would uh -huh. likely just uh, make everything uniform for the committees. So we probably need to go back first and even see what's happening on the committees because I was unaware of things that, yeah that may or may not be happening. And the other so, thing is, is it's, 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 it's been brought up when we've asked about it, that it's, that it's largely an um, equipment problem. It is. You know, that, yeah. and um, so we wouldn't want to do anything that would make the, um, for consistency's sake, that would make the scheduling of meetings more difficult. So I, I'm, I'm not, it's kind of a, I'm not going to And likely to that point, the, Committees that don't use it probably have equipment issues, but that's what I need to find out. Is it just CNC that doesn't use it? The or Council there? Finance Committee did not in our last meeting, and I don't. There was a well, we had a special. Well, but that that's the thing is you know the the public could have participated for a component of that because there was an item unrelated to the um, external auditor interviews, so. It's, the, it's you know, I think having, this is why I think a policy has some value, right? Like I said, but the, we denied, not that we would have had very much public input, but in theory, somebody could have provided input on the single audit, you know, uh, which is the only time for the public to provide input because it doesn't go to council for approval. Um, but, so- But there was public comment options. I mean, someone right, can- Just not virtually, right. yeah. 
So that that's but, but so you know it, it's the equity or at least the consideration of when do we want to allow virtual participation? Is it literally everything or is it not literally everything? And if, if it's not literally everything, then what are some of the guardrails for when we would consider it? So it sounds like it sounds like it might be um, something that something that we could because of this this one incident and possible ones in the future that we could could have some policy on, but it's not doesn't seem urgent. It's not urgent. Okay, and I have to say, in addressing the Zoom bombing situation, it's a disturb. I find it very disturbing, and I just want to say one of the reasons I feel comfortable just letting it go and hoping it doesn't happen again is I think that the our current mayor handled it very professionally and was very unruffled. At least I sit next to her, and she said she was fine. And if you were more disturbed by it, having to chair that I I would say, no, we have to talk about it. But since you seem to be able to handle it, I'm willing to just wait and see. Yeah. So kudos to you. <laughs> um, so I, any other comments or questions? Um, staff, is that, I guess we can leave it up to staff discretion, but do you feel that, um, you, do you need any other information for us about modifying what is currently item seven? Uh, no, I think just let's let us discuss it because we may have to add something like to the greatest extent possible. Sure. Yeah. We just need to see what's happening and where. So we'll have the discussion. Okay. I don't anticipate this would come back in May or June. Mm -hmm. We That's need some fine. time. But I think for sure the shoreline ticket item and then we'll have the discussion. We'll, we'll take it to it. Oh, I do have another question. I'm sorry. Um, no just uh, just this question. Um, you know, we have that that paragraph at the beginning about you have to basically you have to speak civilly, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Do we have to have that? <laughs> no, we just included that before it happened and then when it happened and no, it's a script. And if you don't want I mean, to say we, it, we, we can, have, we can we delete it, it. You know, we have it at BCDC too. And it just seems like it, it starts the meeting on such a negative note. Yeah. I, I really, I, I, mean, I wonder, does it add anything? Is anybody who is going to do that? I mean, it on notice. I, I think we had people drop off after they realized they were being out. Oh, yeah. I mean, there, really? were, there were other people that were going to speak that then. Left. That one night. Yes. Yeah, we saw it. So I, one thing to keep in mind is some of these folks are sophisticated and some of them are not, right? The folks who come in and just use profanity. Well, maybe from the we should do it for a while. Anyway, <laughs> I would, yeah. you know, not... I would not like to have to say, or for the mayor, whoever it is, to have to say yeah. that forever, because I just think it it starts the meeting on such a, you know, such a negative um, uh, notion. And we, you know, for local government, we want people to feel welcome. It is to be, you know, a place that they feel comfortable and and um, feel like good things are happening. And we don't want to sort of start out with, yeah, we it's come to our attention. Or <laughs> and I actually, it's I was thinking the same thing last Tuesday mm -hmm. actually that you know it's kind of sometimes been between it and you know the reason we started out doing it if you all recall was the zoom bombing started happening I believe it was at the end of 23 in all of the cities around us right. mm -hmm. and so we were like yeah. it was like putting people on notice look we know what you're doing if you come to Mountain View you're going to be cut off I mean that it, and you talk you know in a way that's disruptive to the meeting you're going to be cut off and that's why we did that and other cities were doing that too so it was consistent at the time with what was happening. And then for us, it just didn't happen until March. So we you know, had quite a bit of time where we read that statement and then now we're in a different period. So I think it's fine if we take it out of the script and then we'll, now we have we have our drill down and if someone's gonna be disruptive and- Just get ready to cut them off really fast. Right. <laughs> well, we, we, we do have to be mindful though, right? Because- First, First Amendment yes. rights. <laughs> yeah. Yes. One, one other thing I, I would encourage my, my colleagues to, to at least be mindful of is we're not the targets of those attacks, but there might be people who are participating in the meeting who are, and it, it hits them a lot harder than it might hit us. And I, I, I feel like I, we, for those of us who aren't the ones being subject to that really terrible commentary, we can shrug it off. After a while, it is very grating, but if you're sitting there and you weren't anticipating that and you hear that, it hits you like right, you got right. Well, that's why we want to cut them off really fast. As right. soon as it's obvious they're misbehaving, whoop, 
I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, it's like when kids have a temper tantrum, as soon as it starts, you put them in the corner or they can have it by themselves and then they don't want to do it because that the whole thing is to have an audience. So we don't let them have an audience. Any other comments, questions, so, clarifications? Oh, all right. Well, seeing none, I think we're on to the final item. Um, oh, I, I, I put my, uh, my, so oh, here it is. <laughs> uh, I, thank you. Item six. Uh, <laughs> the next item is committee staff comments, questions, or committee reports. No action will be taken on any questions raised by the CPPC at this time. Do any CPPC members, no problem. Do you need it? Um, or uh, staff have comments or questions? I'm not seeing any. Uh, we will now move on to the final item, adjournment. This meeting is adjourned at uh, 4.08 p.m. Yeah. Yeah.